Hello, viewers, and welcome back to another episode of Victoria 2, Heart of Darkness. When we last left off, we were almost done researching steamers, and we're slowly moving up in the world with our military and industry and prestige all slowly ticking up until the point where we'll be number one. And, of course, we were pouring lots of diplomatic influence into Romania, mostly just to see if we could pull it away from Prussia, which, at this point, it does not look like we can, but... We really don't have a whole lot else to spend it on. Uh, I'm going to see if there's anyone else of note to, to get fruit from. Hmm, Portugal might actually be worth putting into my sphere. Oh, they're already in the sphere of the UK. I'm probably not going to be able to get them out of there. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep on keeping on for the moment. And as our infamy ticks down, going to expand a little bit more and keep... Keep researching text to eventually take on China and Russia and the rest of the world. So, let's begin. Of course, every session has to begin with a bankruptcy. I think the market still takes about a month to shake out after each load. So, that might be why the there's a bankruptcy basically every time that I load the game. But, it doesn't really affect us. We lose a little bit if we've loaned them any money, which it looks like we have, but it's significantly less. The five pounds that we've loaned is much, much less than the cost it would be to take them. Hmm. And looking at the projects, I have plenty of money, so I'm going to spend some money there to get railroads moving. It would really be nice to if the capitalists would want to build something here in Seoul. Looks like the Korean Liberation Movement is completely decayed. Nobody's assimilated, but that's okay. As long as they're not unhappy being Japanese citizens, I don't really care what they do. Looks like we're still making plenty of money. So I'm going to up defense spending to 61%. Drop taxes on the rich and the middle again. Can't afford to drop them on the poor, but they're next up as, we, as our income slowly rises. And there we go, steamers are available. So I will, as soon as the invention is available, I will replace these clipper transports and the frigates once we get the ability to make something better than frigates and men of war. Uh, as was suggested in one of the comments, I am going to research positivism next. After all, the additional education efficiency will lead to faster literacy gain, which will in the long run lead to more research. And that is something that we will definitely need to be able to catch up with the other great powers. Looks like our leadership points are building up. I'm going to create an admiral and another general. Looks like we have more than enough admirals, so I won't create another one of those for a while. Looking at the newspaper, crisis was averted. We finished research. The Netherlands has moved into a great power position over Spain, which gives us a nice little chance here. I'm going to start putting all of my influence into Spain, try and keep everybody else from messing with them. I'm going to drop Romania all the way down. There's really no reason to keep spending anything on that. We're not going to beat. Well, actually, we're making good progress right now, so I'll take that back. But I am going to put some into Spain so that hopefully we can keep them out of the sphere of France or anybody else and eventually be able to take the Philippines. At least that would be the ideal. Looks like they have no liberation movement yet, so that might come as time passes. At this point, the liberation movement for colonies is basically zero, as evidenced by theirs being zero. Mm, France has a pretty big head start. But I might just be able to pull Romania out of the sphere of... Prussia. It's at least possible. I'm going to drop down my diplomatic influence on Spain to leave Romania very high in the hopes that I will be able to pull them out. Looks like Prussia just discredited me. Discredited me. Apparently that's a hard word to say. But it shouldn't matter. I should still be able to get to 100% before they get to enough to kick me out. 50%. I gotta do 20 and they gotta do 37. Ah, there we go. That nice invention for plus 20% grain production. 
Yep, there we go. An extra 40 grain a day. R raking in the dough and all of that. Looking at the newspaper. Russians are expanding in Central Asia. Someone's afraid of Sardinia Piedmont. Now it looks like Russia's continued to expand anyways. Artillery's once again dropped. It moves up and down with wars. And there's a crisis in Macedonia. Which I have no real interest in one way or the other. But I'm betting the UK is going to get Greece to... Going to get some extra land for Greece. Unless literally everyone backs against them. But again, no dog in this fight. I'll let them do whatever they want to do. Alright, come on Romania. You must be free from the Prussians. There we go, some additional education efficiency. Looks like our research is speeding up. I'm going to upgrade the naval base tech. Uh, should be done in less than a year. Just still isn't great speed, but we're doing a little bit better. Put another couple researches, and then the 1860s will free up, which means that I'll be able to add another 50% to my base research points from empiricism. Which is, once again, like most of these bonuses, all of them add up, so it's nothing to scoff at. And there we go. Let's remove them from Sphere. So Romania is no longer part of the Prussian Sphere of Influence. They will probably be part of the Russian Sphere of Influence, but we'll keep an eye on it. And it looks like public meetings. I'm going to go ahead and allow them to be to meet publicly. If they want some freedom, I have no problem with it. And if I have enough, yeah, I'm going to drop the taxes on the poor. To it, Our daily balance will be a little bit negative, but not too bad. So it's looking like the industrial subsidies starting to really hit us in the pocketbook. And the UK managed to free some more land from Greece over here. It's non-connected, so that doesn't really help Greece that much, but every little bit counts for them, so I guess good for them. They said I don't doesn't really affect me even slightly, so anything that weakens other great powers is fine with me. Don't think anyone's actually afraid of Nassau, but good try there, newspaper. Hmm, I'm going to look at these industrial subsidies. Ooh, after building up all of these, a winery might be nice. I'm going to cut subsidies for a little bit, let the economy try and shake itself out a, just a little bit without my subsidization. I'm just going to keep an eye. I'm going to upgrade this furniture factory. It seems to be making money hand over fist, in addition to this chuba factory. Hmm, placing the sun against Ottoman Empire. I don't think that'll really help, but yeah, because I don't really want Syria, but it's better than taking militancy for no reason. And then there, I'll do some more subsidization. After all, I don't want to lose too much money. That might have helped at least lower this subsidizing cost. But I'll keep a close eye on finances, just in case. Uh, extra steamer transport, or extra steamer convoy production. I don't think anybody's really producing it right now. i really like to get this invention to show up so I could get some steamer transports, replace these. Old-fashioned clipper, sails and rope type of thing. Ah, oh, speak of the devil. So off these go to the watery depths. And I'm going to build up 20 of these steam tra transports. So... 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Apparently you need at least level 1 uh, naval base to build these, so that was something I was not aware of. And we don't have that many states, so it will be worth keeping an eye on anyways. For the moment it's not really a big deal, though. I've built up as large of naval bases in each of these as I possibly can. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and build a factory in Seoul and in Pyongyang. At least in theory. I'm going to figure out what's in demand. Not machine parts. 
I don't really have enough fabric. Glass. Glass is what I will do. So which of these has coal? Pyongyang has coal. And Seoul does not. So I'm going to build a glass factory here. Which needs only coal. Which means that it should turn around and have a 25% increase to throughput. And what else is still in demand? Industrial goods. Iron is, or steel rather is, but I'm not sure if I have, hmm, there's iron in Saiwan, or Sarawan, excuse me, but it's not a very large, it's not a very large state. Seoul does not have, Seoul just has grain and fish, and then timber, but lumber is at, there's more than enough lumber at the moment, let's just put it that way. Let me see. Where else do we need? Sorting by name. We don't have anything in Kansai, which is our largest state, which has Kyoto, Osaka. I guess it is this area here. Tea, grain, tea, gold. So no benefits to anything, but I'm. it has just so many people that get these I'm gonna go ahead and build a steel factory here anyways and let those build up for the moment that should help with our industrialization go from there I don't want to spend too much directly or else I'm gonna go completely bankrupt but I'm doing all right on money at the moment and capitalists are just, well they're using the national bank at least it looks like there's a lot of investors so this money is being put to good use all of these capitalists are spending money hand over foot trying to get in on the boom of industry and I say they can't do it fast enough our influence with both Spain and Romania are progressing pretty well Looks like nobody's really taking that much of an interest in Spain at the moment. Ah, there we go. Battleship Column Doctrine just finished. So I'm going to research Army Professionalism, which will raise supply consumption, which isn't great, but will increase the demands for some of our military goods, increases morale, and most importantly, military tactics, which decreases the speed of casualties while at war. It interacts with the military tactics of whoever you're fighting, I don't really know the exact numbers, but I know that more military tactics means fewer casualties. Um, oh, Netherlands went to war to try and annex a land. I don't like that one bit. I might have to keep an eye on them if they try to encroach too much into my sphere of influence, for lack of a better term. I am definitely going to put them down. But for the moment, it looks like Alan's doing adequately, so I will go ahead and leave them be. Siam will be my next target anyways. I can either hit some concessions. Yeah, in fact, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. I'm going to start on justifying that so that I can grab a nice chunk of Siam. It looks like Burma's done anyways, so it would appear there are only two two states for Siam. So I might, if I don't get too much infamy from this justification, I might even just take the 10 or 11 hit and switch it over to Conquest. I'm not sure if I can do that. We'll see as it happens. A nice event. Uh, plus 0.1... 0.01 militancy isn't really that meaningful when you consider plus 125% iron, so I'm going to just take the blood and iron mine. It's a it's a province effect that, or maybe even whole state effect, that will last until the end of the game, so I would be crazy not to accept that, unless I was already having huge issues with militancy. Mm, well, so much for that. I just took almost five infamy for trying to get that state. But that's okay. 
all land is good land, and then I will have a nice foothold to move into Cambodia, into uh, Luang Prabang, which I'm still not sure is really a country, um, and then eventually Da Nam. Ah, another nice, relatively nice event. It only lasts three years, but loses militancy, raises consciousness a little bit, and a slight increase to efficiency. So a slight increase to income, as it so translates. Since we're making plenty of money, I'm going to drop taxes on the rich and the middle class again. And let the poor hold the majority of the economy up with their taxes. I'm going to increase my Spain's opinion of me, which also increases their relationship, which thus speeds up the speed that I give influence to them. Although not by a whole lot. Looking at the newspaper, Argentina and Bolivia are fighting, and the Netherlands is are afraid of France. So hopefully, hopefully a war in Europe will soon keep the Netherlands attention and keep them out of my land, or at least what should be my land. Uh, looking over into South America, the war between... Wow, Bolivia has really expanded. They've been doing quite well, taking some land from Brazil, and it looks like, yeah, from Chile. So, I assume they're trying for these cores, if they're the ones who started the war. Nope. Argentina is the one that started it. They're looking for taking back some cores from Bolivia that one of their allies has, by the looks of it. We will watch that with sincere interest, by which I mean I'll notice it again when the war is over and I'm notified in the newspaper of it, but it's one of those little benefits of the new newspaper, is it keeps you somewhat updated, which is kind of the point. All right, there we go. Session of territory. Ah, Siamese, Cambodia, and... Nakhon, whatever that is. So I guess that's why we couldn't annex them outright. But for the moment, once all of these transports finish, I will ship them over and then send some of my men to conquer Siam. At least the bits of it that I can convince them to give up. Looks like pretty good population. Only one province in Siamese Cambodia, so I'm definitely going to go for the in our state that I really can't pronounce. Even though it's jungle and hills, there's a lot of production of tea and fruit. Fruit especially will be nice since it's one of our most imported goods. Which, there we go. Romania is now in our sphere. So I'm going to drop down the influence on them to minimum, just so that it will eventually build up to 100 and I'll be able to keep out anybody else from messing with it. As if it's at 100 and any other great powers have influence, it will drain that off of them, and additionally it will just be ready so that if anybody else tries to pull me out of, pull them out of my sphere, I can ban their embassies, I can just kick them out, any of that. They have, Romania is a pretty good grab for us considering they're one of the largest producers of wool, as we checked a couple episodes back, as well as having an adequate military and just a very large amount of production because of their quite large population. So I'm very happy with them joining our fold. Hmm. Looks like I'm going to pop that back up to two priority because I don't really want Russia coming in and taking our hard-earned Romanian wool. And there's our navy ready to go. I'm going to send them over to Malaysian Peninsula and board my men, have them ready to invade as soon as I sign the war deck. Ah, war between France and Netherlands. I swear I just hoped that that was going to happen. And a little bit of a bug here. Whoops. But that might just keep the Netherlands, or might push the Netherlands to sue for white peace and thus leave everybody else alone since they're at war, or leave all of the people I'm interested in, all the countries I'm interested in, alone, since France is going to overrun them very quickly, and might even try and land some here in Oceania, Indonesian area. There we 
there we go. The transports have shown up much quicker than the clippers would have taken, although not as fast as I would have liked. As technology progresses, they will speed up beyond the 8 kilometers per hour. And here we go. Demand concession. The big state. Don't care if Aunt J, however you pronounce it, decides to join the war. I'm just going to move this unit that's still on land. And then send these from the second front. While also keeping my steam transports here to blockade. After all, it doesn't look like Siam has much of a navy. In fact, it has zero and no brigades, at least as far as this information says. So, should not be a hard war by any means. The Ottoman Aegean Islands. It looks like Greece is still trying to expand. And UK has supported them. But the Rus Russia supported the Ottomans, so it's unlikely that the UK will be able to force them to... Well, never mind. I was just saying that they weren't going to back down. The UK must have gotten some serious support very quickly. Because now the, uh, the Aegean Islands are... Aegean? Aegean Islands are now Greek. How about that? Mm. Anarcho-liberals are starting to organize, but... There's a whole thousand of them. I'm not super afraid. On the other hand, I may have to give some voting rights to people soon, or that number may grow as the suffrage movement is grows and then is ignored. And without any forts, these sieges should go very, very quickly. Uh, looks like our technology finished. 59. I'm going to get. Hmm. Do additional resources. None of these are really jumping out at me. Certainly aren't interested in those two. I guess I'm going to go with muzzle loaded rifles. Lowering combat width means that eventually, with larger armies, I will have an advantage over China because they can't overwhelm me with a huge army if the width is small enough. And engineers are very useful because they cut down on the effectiveness of forts both in slowing down sieges and in uh, digging in for when you first start a battle. Uh, in addition, in Heart of Darkness they can now sit in the back line of a, war, of a battle, which means that they work as artillery with not as much support, but still they don't have to take up a front line space that, where they'll just get mauled. And the UK has insulted us, but I don't really care. I'm going to accept the prestige, because prestige is way more useful than trying to go to war with the UK and losing prestige. And extra friendship between the two of us. Can't hurt. Better relations and all that. Looks like we moved up to number five, though again, that's probably because we're at war, and our military value basically doubles when that happens. The first province got finished sieging. And the Netherlands is helping us siege over here. How nice of them. I'm going to move to Bangkok now that that's done. Here it's nice that this time of the year after all. Wow, and it looks like they must have a pretty big penalty to movement. Oh no, they're not moving the same place. Never mind. That would be why it seems like they're taking much longer to get places. So they're not going the same place. I can increase the opinion of Spain towards me again. Looks like I might have to fight France for it. Not militarily, but as far as influence goes. I'm going to drop the influence on Romania down to one pip again, so that I have three on Spain, and I can speed up my influence in Spain. And another siege has been finished. Let's see. There we go, Siam. Oh, apparently Luang Prong is the head of this war. I'm not sure why, but I guess that's okay. That really makes no sense. Maybe it's just because Siam had their military absolutely devastated, whereas Luang Prang, no, Luang mm, Prabang has a whole three military instead of zero. But that would just be my guess. It's probably just a little oddity of the game engine. Oh, we've missed two different newspapers. Crisis averted because Russia gave in. 
some new parties in the UK. I wish we could get one of those. Uh, Spain is really friendly with Prussia and something about our war. Oh, and apparently St. Mary showed up in the Pyrenees. How nice for her. I'm going to increase relations with Spain. This, these diplomatic points are just building up. It's one of those things that I rarely ever use. I'm going to increase it with Romania too. It speeds up the influence by having better relations. So if I'm just letting these resources sit and not do anything, might as well spend them on something, right? I'm going to keep on sieging, but should be getting close to... Ah, there we go. And they will accept this piece. Very nice. Oh, and on top of that, a lot more grain, tea, and fruit production. Excellent. This has been quite the month for us. I'm just going to move these units back. Just have them wait at the Siamese borders so that once the truce wears off and our infamy goes down, we will be ready to strike, jump in, and just completely annihilate these. Might even take a state off of Burma while we wait, but... Our infamy is pretty high at the moment, so I'm going to let it bleed off a little bit more before we do anything. Let money build up again. It's looking like, finally, the capitalists are building a steel factory. Ever so slowly, but slow and sure finish the, finishes the race. Or at least so they say. Uh, it looks like our industrial subsidies are starting to really take a toll. But there's not a lot of place that we could cut back on them. And, in fact, everything says it's making profit. I'm not sure why we're losing tons of money. But, there we go. Dropped the industrial subsidies. And then popped them back in. Maybe it'll keep it a little lower. If not, no real harm done. We're still doing fine on money. Um, another newspaper... I don't believe this was a great war, so I think this might be an incorrect newspaper article, since normally that would be for great wars, which involve two or more great powers after a certain point. I think it's 1880 or so, at which point the invention shows up and everyone in the world gets great wars activated, at which point both sides automatically have a great war capitulation CB on the other side added, and pretty much ensures the war is going to be long and bloody. Not a fun situation, but I'm sure it's one that we will get to and have to deal with before too long. Especially if China civilizes, though at this point they're still considered uncivilized nation, not even getting to whatever the next level is up from that. So, I'm not too worried. They're not primitive still, but they're not... Oh, I can't even think of what the next level is. There's another level between uncivilized and a westernized nation once they get a little closer to westernization. So I'll keep an eye on them, but for the moment, they're big but not very threatening. The big unthreatening giant, as you could call them. I sincerely hope you won't call them that, but you could call them that. All right, I'm going to gain some liberal in the upper house and a little bit of plurality. Why not? The liberals will probably fade away as soon as it become as soon as the upper house is rearranged, but perhaps if this movement gains a little bit more size, we might be able to pass through voting reform. There we go. Academic training, additional morale, which increases the uh, the re increases the speed at which morale comes back to units, which is dropped. In battles, once the morale gets to zero, they can no longer fight in that battle, or in any battle for that matter. Uh, additional plurality. These don't come. These inventions don't come quite as quickly right after the research of ideological thought that they used to. But it sort of evens out the curve of how fast your research gain g increases. So. It looks like our plurality at the moment is at about 50%. So we've still got plenty to go. And looking at potential inventions, we have just one more plurality invention. So plurality should slowly tick back, tick up, and thus our research points will slowly tick up. 
We have way more clergymen than we currently need, but I think that's because of the large number in in uh, the home islands, while a lot fewer in other areas. So those will hit enough to be 2% overall, while they're not 2% in other places, probably due to our liberal use of the encourage clergymen the encourage clergymen national focus early on which pushed them above the two percent ideal um, speaking of national folk high, this one here in Tohoku has fin has gotten above ten percent capitalists so I'm going to clear that one out and move it to Seoul our next largest our next largest state I should say until each of these are 10%. Once they're all at 10%, then I'll do something else. But at the moment, that's pretty much the only thing I really have any interest in doing with my national foci. Focuses, foci, whichever you want to choose. Man, there are all sorts of these projects that are very slowly being built right now. There's not a ton of money in the national bank, but enough that capitalists should keep growing all of this. Let's see, is there anything being built in Seoul? There still has not been anything in Seoul, and considering its size, that's just a shame. So I'm going to look. High demand? Not in high demand. I'm going to build one of these luxury goods. Because I have so much... Because I have so much timber and tropical wood, I think I'm going to just go ahead and build a tropical or not tropical, luxury furniture factory. So that it's a huge money maker and I can certainly use somewhere to put all of this tropical good. If I'm not using it, someone else will be importing it and you make a lot more from finished goods. Ah, the US is again at war with Mexico, probably for these last cores here in Arizona. But it should not have taken them three wars to do what it they did in one in real life, but I guess that happens. Additional liberal in the upper house. It might be enough. Nope, not quite enough to push me over the edge. 47% or so would vote yes for this reform, which just isn't enough. And engineers finished. Um, next one I'll do is strategic mobility. The extra defense is probably worth it in the long run. And it's pretty low, unless one of these others really jumps out. Well, no, never mind. I'll do early railroad. One can never have too many railroads. Railroads are extremely important to speeding up industrialization and increasing efficiency, which we've now moved up to number five in the world in industrial power. Still not a great score, but it's not even 1860 yet, so we've got plenty of time yet to catch the rest of the world. And more fish. Ah, just in time, right before the right before the upper house gets rearranged, we can do some only landed voting. So only the very only the rich can vote, but it's a step in the right direction. So I'm also going to accept this fish and a nice related to fish, 50% additional fishing production output and liberal actually gained some space, but probably because uh, the upper house rearranges a little bit whenever you enact a reform. So I'll keep an eye on that. I'm going to cut it here for now, J January 1st, 1860. We've just passed our first political reform. We have taken on some more of Siam and are expanding into Southeast Asia. And our army and industry are continuing to build quite nicely. So thanks for watching, and I and check back soon for more Victoria 2, Heart of Darkness.